Sunday in Lent. If you are a guest here today with Vista, a special welcome to you. It is our prayer always that this service is to the glory of God, that we offer our prayer and our praise, that we are challenged and hear the word of God, that we leave this place as God's people of light and love and hope in the world. We are gathered today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Loving God, we, we confess, confess that we have turned away from your way, way to follow, follow our own ways. ways. Forgive, Forgive us for the times we have spoken or acted too quickly, quickly. We and we have not spoken or acted at all. We have hurt those closest to us. We have hurt those we have yet to know. We have thought more about ourselves than others. We have thought less of ourselves than we ought. We confess that we need your touch, direction, and light. Even when we have done wrong, God makes us right. Even when we have messed up, God puts us together. God's love never runs out. God never tires of calling us beloved children. Hear God say to you now, your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Sweet. 
Holy God, in the waters of the flood, you save the chosen, and in the wilderness of temptation, you protected your Son from sin. Renew us in the gift of baptism. May you direct and strengthen us to follow faithfully where you lead. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Understood. When my heart is full. 
The reading from the New Testament is from 1 Peter chapter 3, beginning in verse 18. Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you. Not as a removal of dirt from your body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. that you're having a great day. Um, the sun is hopefully out, and I know the forecast, at least when we taped the service, said it was going to be warmer. So I am hoping that that happens. I hope that you get a chance to go out and enjoy God's creation today. And what I want you to do today is look at light. Look at the light hitting the snow. Maybe it's making it all shimmery and um, even a little bit slick looking because it's maybe even melting a little bit. And if you can, I want you to look at the, the windows and the glass things and the shiny things in your house. So if you want to take a second here, go find something shiny. When you hold something shiny up to the light, a lot of things happen. It can reflect light, but if you get a piece of like crystal or glass, did you know it can also break the light? So you hold it just right. The light, which looks like one thing, will split apart and you can see a rainbow. Um, not really a rainbow because there's no water going on, but the light splits apart. And I want you to notice that because the story of Noah, which I'm going to talk about, which you'll hear about in Sunday school, is a story that we often tell to kids because it has some cute animals in it and you get to walk two by two. But the story of Noah can be a little scary because there was a big storm that destroyed everything. Okay, so it's actually a lot scary. Things were breaking. And, and dying. Yikes. Even the light breaks apart. The world is fragile. But here's the good news when we see the rainbow. God promises in the story of Noah that never again would everything get destroyed by some sort of massive flood that covered everything. That God would keep that promise. Not because we do everything right. In fact, we definitely don't. Because God loves us and wants good things for us. So as you are hopefully outside today, noticing the world that God made, I want you to think about ways you can take care of that world. Because while God promises there's going to be no more floods that destroy everything, we as people 
are pretty good at destroying stuff. We do a lot of stuff that makes our world dirty, that hurts the animals, that hurts the people around us. So I want you to look for those rainbows, those rainbow signs. And remember that even as light breaks apart, something beautiful happens. You see the rainbow. And that even as our world sometimes looks pretty broken, that God is still doing beautiful things. Go out and enjoy that world that God has made today and know that you are a part of that world, a special part, and have a part in protecting and working in that world too. So let's pray. You can repeat after me. Dear God, Thank you for all that you have made. Thank you for all that you have made. Including me. Including me. Help us take care. Help us take care. Of your whole creation. Of your whole creation. Amen. Thanks for your attention. Well, as I just mentioned to the kids, the story of Noah is complicated. It's way more than cute animals going two by two in a fun song you learned in Sunday school. It is a story of a man who, while chosen by God, was also not a perfect man. And it's a story that is seemingly shared by other cultures. If you look um, anthropologically through stories of creation and origin stories of peoples, you will often find a great flood story. Notably, we studied the Epic of Gilgamesh in, in seminary, um, which is from a Mesopotamian, Sumerian culture. But there's also, in our own country, many flood stories from our indigenous people. And there are flood stories from around the world. We see evidence, even in our world, of very dry places like our deserts, once harboring aquatic life. And perhaps it wasn't because of a flood, but, you know, tectonic shift and plates being pushed up or um, a range in lake and riverbed that dried up. But the story of the flood, while multifaceted I and mean, challenging from a perspective of anthropology, is I think even more challenging because of the destruction. because it's a story of destruction. God says, things have gotten so bad here, let's start over. And as we look around our world, and sometimes things look pretty bad, we might wonder, I mean, is that bow in the sky? You sure, God? Is that really? You promised, right? A writer and a musician I like um, by the name of Aaron Weiss, who fronts a band called Me Without You, they did a whole uh, concept album on uh, the apocalypse. So that gives you a taste of what I do in my free time. So if you don't want to hang out with me, that's cool. Um, he said, God gave Noah the rainbow sign. No more water. Is it the H-bomb next time? Because as humans, we have a capacity for doing things that destroy. I mean, I talked to my dad, um, who grew up on Air Force bases in the 60s, 50s, late 50s, 60s. And he said for a long time in his childhood, 
he wasn't so convinced that he was going to be an adult. Because, you see, he grew up on bases during the Cold War. And they did little drills weekly where they would run under their desk and hide in case the bomb was dropped. What a sobering thing for a kid to do in school. And some of you maybe remember doing that yourselves in school. He told me that after um, I, as an adolescent, was contending with the effects of 9-11 and the chaos that seemed to feel like it was everywhere during that time. We know destruction. And the story of Noah is a story of destruction. Now, the destruction of life in this way is an isolated event in Scripture. Never again does God flood the world, the whole world, and will wipe everything out. But we certainly experience destruction in our communities and lives. Of course, to name the obvious, a pandemic. Casualties. Destruction of lives, of ways of life, of ways of being. But we also remember that this is, what, this is not the first pandemic. None of us were alive during the last really bad one, but I venture a guess that people were asking some tough questions back in 1918 as well. Think back to the time of Martin Luther. They contended with the plague. Think of people that have suffered genocides in their societies. Our own American tribes that were marched for the purpose of destroying them, taking their land, and taking away their, even their, their personhood. We see the climate crisis the slow killing of our planet's ecosystem and biodiversity. So how do we understand God's faithfulness through this story of Noah? It's about what happens on the other side of destruction. Because the story of Noah is not the story of a, happy, of a happy ending, but the story of a challenging beginning. We look to 1 Peter. And he says that baptism, the, the uniting with Christ and Christ's death and resurrection, is prefigured or I, perhaps foreshadowed by the deliverance from the flood. When we have a service of baptism, we also speak about how God has led the people out of bondage in the story of Exodus through the waters of the Red Sea and into freedom. Baptism, we know, is a challenging beginning. We are not ushered into life in a bubble when we're baptized, right? Even if we're cute little babies, or maybe we're older adults who are, are cute in our own ways, but we are baptized into the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We are baptized into a life that will see us through trials and into new realities. That will call us out of our complacent comfort places and into faithful action. And we are in the season of life. All to contemplate who we are in this life that can bring so much joy and hope, but also so much pain and destruction. We're called to contemplate who we are and who God is. As we are marked with the cross of Christ on Ash Wednesday, we are reminded of the lengths that God would go to to be with us to bring grace and love to us. 
We enter into this season of Lent not trying to be better or for self-improvement or earning God's love, but to remember that God meets us with the promise. That God's righteousness covers our unrighteousness. That we move through this world, this life, in grace. That though there is destruction and scary stuff and pain, that they do not have the last word. That there is an other side. When we see the world breaking, and indeed broken by the weight of humanity's sin, we remember the rainbow. Destruction's real and present in our relationships and our systems, but destruction doesn't get the last word. Because God's covenant is less about us keeping it and more about God remembering and promising to move toward us with grace. God promises to remember. God promises to act even in the midst of our destruction. And God comes to us and makes order out of the chaos, makes hope in the midst of despair and even, yes, life in the midst of death. So people of God, look for the rainbow signs in this breaking world. They are there. And go into this world naming and proclaiming the grace and hope that meets us. In Jesus' name. Amen. church. Open us as the people of Vista to listen to your word and do your will. Direct us in paths of faithful service that reflect your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Empower us to care for your creation and to treasure the fruits of your creating. Guide our actions, give knowledge and wisdom throughout your world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. God of hope, thank you for your constant presence as we walk with your children through challenges of joblessness, homelessness, grief, and sickness. Especially in this world of uncertainty, give us your strength and peace. Gather your community around those in need of your healing power that they may find strength in you. We pray especially this morning for Don and Diane and all those that we name silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Accompany us on our Lenten journeys and inspire us to walk and grow as your children of faith and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We are your community of faith. Imperfect, yet given, given your word and direction. Help us to listen. Give us courage to answer your call of love and service. Deepen us in faith and vision as we reach out in service to our community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and fill us with the radiance of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with, with you. you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. We continue with growing God's ministry through Vista. We are in the midst of a very cold winter that is getting better so we pray for our neighbors that are in distress and we reach out to those that surround us through step or through our giving so that we might impact those that are in need as you can see today um, we are in need of readers so if you are able to read the lessons or help with the prayers of the people please contact um, pastor dan or if you don't have his email myself and let us know and we will call you and put you on the schedule. We all give what we can. We are all blessed and we thank God for each one of you. May God's warmth and light and hope and especially bow in the sky be over you in the days to come. We continue with let the vineyards be fruitful. special meal you are invited not by me as one of the pastors of Vista but by the invitation of God you are celebrated and welcome the Lord be with you and, and also with, with you. you lift up your hearts we lift, we lift them, them to the Lord. Lord let us give thanks to the Lord our God it, it is, is right, right to give our thanks and praise in the night in which he was betrayed our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this in remembrance of me again after supper he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin do this in remembrance of me even though we are apart, together we are connected as we pray the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our and Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to take your bread or cracker, the body of Christ, given for you.
Take your cup. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. God.